Robbie, first, thank you so much for doing this interview with me. I mean, Flashdance, an iconic movie. When you were approached with this project, I mean, what were your thoughts taking on something like this? Well, it, first of all, it's a thrill. I mean, it is such an iconic title, so to have the opportunity to be a part of something that had such a an impact on popular culture is obviously a real thrill. And then, you know, there's a certain part that's daunting because uh, what comes with Flashdance, thankfully, are these hugely iconic songs from the movie. We have five numbers in the movie, one of which was an Academy Award winner. So these are phenomenal pieces of pop music. So, uh, you know, it's, it can be intimidating to write the other songs that nobody's ever heard before, but, but that as well is a, is a privilege and, and it's, uh, it's a great challenge to attempt to write a score that um, feels of a piece so that you're not hearing Maniac and then hearing another piece of music that sounds like it's from a different world. The challenge, and I think we were successful in doing it, is, is uh, to sort of blur those lines. So you're hearing stuff that's familiar, and then you're hearing stuff that just feels right. It feels like you're in the same world. So let's talk about that. How did you take on that type of story when, A, we're talking about the 80s, so you have to keep the music in an 80s feel, and two, still tell the story as well as the hit songs did? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, the, the primary uh, job when you're composing a theater piece is to tell the story. That was the mandate, you know, first and foremost. And this does take place in the 80s, but I think uh, I, both myself and the director and the producers, nobody wanted to, to uh, remain hewed to the 80s necessarily. We, I think, in, in all facets of the show, from a fashion standpoint, from a dance standpoint, and particularly from a music standpoint, we have elements that, that are signature elements of the 80s, but it's all done in a very contemporary way. So the sounds that we're playing with are all very modern and cutting edge and, and theatrical still. Um, but I didn't want to necessarily write a period piece. So even um, Maniac and What a Feeling, they have those signature riffs, I love rock and roll, you know, that you have come to love, but they're done in a way that feels modern. And moreover, they're done in a way that um, allows the songs to break open and, and go to a, an even more exciting place in terms of the dance. And that was a, an important part of the show. The entire show has to dance from beginning to end. So uh, my work with Sergio Trujillo, who's a very celebrated Toronto uh, choreographer and director, um, we had to really make sure that all of these pieces of music um, had that ability to break open and really go to amazing places rhythmically. But also uh, the characters themselves, because in the movie, of course, they don't sing. But this time you have to, again, take that approach as representing that music for each character. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And I mean, you know, for me, that's the, the trickiest thing. I always want to be intimidated by, uh, it, you know, it's, it's, it continues to me to be uh, uh, challenging to make it believable that somebody just suddenly starts singing. Were I to start singing to you right now, it would be somewhat ridiculous. But, but I think we earn it with this show. We, we are picking out the places where the emotion is strong enough that it makes sense that these characters do break out into singing. You know, the film accomplishes it in different ways, particularly with dance. We have this added ability that when our characters uh, don't have the ability to say what they want to say in common parlance, they, they sing. And I think we've done a, a good job of, of making that leap believable. You know, and, yeah. and I was just going to say it deepens the characters' um, arcs by being able to do that. And I was going to say, what was probably the most difficult part for you in creating this music for this? Uh, well, I mean, you know, uh, Alex Owens, uh, our heroine, is, is, is so well known in popular culture, everything about her. The movie is so understood and people love it and and you know it's it's a challenge to um, take that and, and adapt it to a different medium we had to make sure that we were honoring the things that the film does well but we also have to be cognizant that this is a different art form you can't just put the movie on stage so I think the biggest challenge for me was to try and uh, maintain those things that make that movie so fantastic but uh, properly twist them so that they belong on a stage. What do you hope that fans of the movie and fans who may not have ever seen the movie but getting a chance now to see a glimpse of it in this musical, what do you hope that they both get out of it? Because we're talking different generations now all coming together. Yeah, that's right. And you know, one of the interesting things that we've seen all over the world now, we have productions running all over the world. Um, we're seeing a lot of uh, 
parents, mothers and fathers in their late, I guess, mid 40s, late 40s, coming with their teenage kids. So we are seeing that kind of cross-generational appeal. And I think that has to do with the fact that it is a classic story. You're going to see a girl who um, is living in a circumstance uh, that doesn't necessarily afford people the ability to uh, live out their dream. And this really is the story of a girl who just uses her, uh, you know, uh, overcomes her fears and, and, and finds an, an ability to uh, go out and get this. And I think it, it, so for people who love the film, we're delivering the film. We've got all the classic pull the water, bra off moments that are flash dance, but we're also enhancing it and making it do the things that a great musical does. We've got a big, talented cast, you know, singing big songs and the dancing is wild. And, you know, I, so I think I know a lot of people who, who come who don't fully remember the movie and they're immediately taken back to that feeling when they watched it. So I, hopefully it does it for all manner of people. I'm just curious, one other question yeah. uh, for folks who are in the audience and when you're watching them, does anybody break out when Maniac comes up and they start oh, doing the... <laughs> totally, yeah. I mean, you know, the, the cool thing about, um, well, a number of the songs, Maniac, What a Feeling, and, and I Love Rock and Roll for sure. Those are, the magic of those songs is that the minute you hear, you know, the first bar, the first drum rhythm in, in uh, Maniac, that guitar riff and I Love Rock and Roll, you know instantly what it is. And not only that, but you are taken to that place. It's, it's in you. It's, those are songs that we all grew up listening to and loving and it's amazing to watch the audience's body language change up you know you get this kind of like buzz in the audience which is lovely